before the Nintendo DS launched in late 2004, Climax's portable studio was at work trying to secure licenses. One of the pitches that they made was for a Harry Potter Goblet of Fire game. Climax Handheld was invited to pitch for the license, creating the demo that you see here. If you missed it, I previously uploaded a video from the studio of the demo running on Prototype DS hardware. Taking place in the Gryffindor common room, players can switch between Harry, Hermione, and Ron. The main draw of the demo is that it would allow the player to draw spells on the screen. Three spells are available in a demo. A horizontal slash from left to right that casts a shield. A slash from right to left that casts a homing fireball. And a V shape that casts a lightning bolt. One of the other things they wanted to highlight in this demo is the fact that there is dynamic lighting in their engine, noticeable mostly around the fireplace. Like most pitch demos, it is incredibly simple, but for me at least, it was interesting to see how studios were trying to implement the touchscreen capabilities of the DS prior to it launching. They spent a few weeks on this demo, but unfortunately, it went nowhere. As luck would have it though, Climax would have yet another chance to pitch for the Harry Potter license. This second demo was called Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore's Army. Unlike the first demo where the team had a few weeks to work on it, this demo was created in just four days. One of the key aspects of this demo was the team's ability to convert core PS2 assets and to get them into the game on the DS extremely quickly, a requirement for the pitch. Even in that short time, the touchscreen was implemented along with multi-character gameplay. Two areas are available, the Hogwarts rooftop and inside the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. Along with that, there were two characters available this time, Harry and Hermione. Had the game been developed further, players would have been able to cast spells using the touchscreen just like the previous demo, or even by talking into the microphone. Online versus modes would have been included, along with a co-op action mode. As players explored Hogwarts, they would have been able to take care of familiars, magical creatures that could be tamed not unlike Pokemon. Cats, owls, and rats could have been tamed. If the player found Betty Bot's every flavor beans, they could feed it to their familiar, improving its abilities. At the start of each chapter of the game, players would have been presented with a secret password that they would have spoken to gain access to each wing of Hogwarts. The Room of Requirements would act as a hub for the player, allowing them to practice the spells that they learned along the way. The top screen would present the action like most DS games, while the bottom would show the Marauders map, acting as it would in the books and movies by highlighting not only the player, but others as well. The full game's cast would include the three mainstays of Harry, Hermione, and Ron, but would expand to include Ginny, Neville, and Luna as well, fighting in a team of three with Harry as the leader. Despite this pitch, Visual Impact was ultimately chosen to create the Order of Phoenix game on the DS. Say what you want to about this pitch, but the pre-rendered backgrounds and boring gameplay of the released DS game to me seem far worse. On multiple occasions, Climax felt good about their chances of receiving a contract to create a Harry Potter DS game. While nothing was ever confirmed, the teams had received hints that they were, at the very least, one of the frontrunners, and on at least one occasion the team thought that the contract was all but locked down. But it simply wasn't meant to be. If you liked this video, do check out some of these other videos on prototype games. Hit that subscribe button, check us out on Patreon. Until next time, thank you for watching.